Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, May 31st, the last day of May. We had an awesome weekend hanging out with Becca, going to Universal Studios, going to the Warner Brothers tour, and now we are back at Icon on Tuesday after the long weekend. We are ready to kill it this week. We are going into week nine of this quarter. We were a little bit behind last week, but we fully caught up and we got kind of lucky because most of the projects are due after two weeks instead of every week because, well, well, they're getting bigger and bigger as we head towards finals week. This morning, we are working on our secret project. We're pulling up one of our tracks because we need to get it sounding good. We need to work on it before our mentor session tonight at 7 p.m. As you know, on Tuesdays, we have advanced mastering theory and then advanced mixing. So right now, we're opening Ableton up and we are just gonna dive in head first on this beautiful Tuesday morning. As per usual, I'll give you a little recap at the end of the day for how my classes went. Let's kill it this week. I'm gonna get to work. Good evening, Tuesday still. Let me give you a recap of what we learned today. For Mastering Theory, we went over mastering different genres and different mediums. And so the main things we went over are what is the loudness for different genres? For example, electronic music, anywhere from negative nine to negative six luffs. And even some electronic music is pushing it to three and four, as opposed to rock, where that can be anywhere from negative 12 to negative eight luffs. And so like I've been saying, the idea with mastering is to get the track to translate well across as many listening devices as possible. Generally, negative nine is a good medium between quiet and loud across pretty much any genre. Our instructor said if everyone just did negative nine lefts on the master, we would have a solid listening experience across all tracks on most listening devices. This whole loudness war thing has kind of gotten out of control. Really, depending on the style of music you're doing, even within electronic music, pushing it to negative four, negative three, you're losing a lot of quality pushing the sound so hard hard. Negative nine seems to be that sweet spot for loudness as well as clarity. We also went over mastering for film, mastering for vinyl, and mastering for mobile media like a game on your phone. All right, next up, advanced mixing, and this is going to be a lot of fun and a lot of work. We are mixing a synth metal track called Doomed by Bring Me the Horizon. This is the biggest track that we have to mix. It has around, I think, a hundred stems, vocals, percussion, every single thing. We need to mix it down. And this is a really, really solid metal track. I really do feel super, super confident in my mixes. I've got some friends who are singers, they're in bands. I would actually love to get my hands on some of their stems, mix those tracks for them. Like I said in previous vlogs, I wasn't too keen on learning all these other genres, but I'm really seeing now towards the end of the course how it's gonna benefit me in my own work, but not only that, to be a mixing engineer for other people in other genres is something that I never thought I'd be doing, and now I'm really eager to mix other genres. All right, as usual, stay with me. Mentor session recap. Not much to say, to be honest. We are just cruising along, working on the tracks for my secret project, and honestly, the way I see this unfolding is that I I am creating a lot of new stuff. I'm doing a ton of resampling. Everything that I'm learning in this one semester here is kind of changing the game for me, to be honest. A lot of the older music that I had created for this project, it's not that I'm gonna throw it away or anything like that. It's that it was kind of a stepping stone to where I'm at now, skill level wise. I don't think anything I've ever created for this project will go to waste, but I'm just super happy at how everything's evolving and how my mentor has just been such a huge huge help for this project and the direction that it's going. So yeah, there's the long recap. Tons of work done today, lots of cool concepts. Like I said, I just feel like we're in the groove of things. We are just getting the experience in of all the things that we've learned across this whole quarter, and I could not be happier with where we're at. All right, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, June 1st. Today is officially 
two years out of the military for me and I could not be happier with that decision that's for sure this morning we are going to be finishing off some of the masters that we're doing for the level ones to threes for our advanced mastering final we have to hand in all the masters that we do as well as the correspondence emails that we send back and forth between the other students that's kind of our main priority first and then after that we're going to be jumping into this big mastering project that we have we are mastering a nine track album and there's a lot to do because essentially I need to do this in three different parts. Number one, we need to do all the in the box correcting. So any phasing issues, anything out of balance, anything that needs to be brought up like a vocal, for example, we need to do that all in the box prior to going to the mastering studio. This project, we are required to use the hardware in the mastering studio. So utilizing the best of both worlds, we use the plugins on the computer for their precision. Then we bring it into the mastering studio to add some color, add some life, use the analog hardware, get that nice feel, and then we'll bring it back into the box, into Ableton, using plugins to do any last correction, and then we'll get to our loudness stage. As you know, the four principles to mastering, correction, control, enhancement, finalization. We are mastering a crazy amount of tracks in this course, and I'm super stoked about that. Nothing beats the actual experience of doing the thing. It's easy to sit there and learn online and watch videos over and over and over and over again. But if you're not actually putting the time in practice, you're not really gonna go anywhere. So what do we got going on today? Well, 12 o'clock, we are in the mastering studio for the practical portion of the mastering course. I should be in the hot seat today and we are mastering other genres today. And that is possibly going to include a Christmas song that our instructor has been hinting at. And I kind of dibsed the Christmas song. So I'm looking forward to that. We'll see how I do. Unfortunately, I can't film any of that because I'm not allowed to film during class but I think it's gonna be fun. I love Christmas, so why not master the Christmas tune? It's also my week off from advanced vocal production class, and as you know, we are in the studio recording one of the Icon instructors. I'm definitely gonna pop in. We're allowed to go and observe on our week off and just see how the other half of my classmates are doing. Yeah, today's gonna be all about homework. I'll definitely tell you how mastering that Christmas song goes. I hope your week's going well and we're gonna get back to work. Good evening, Wednesday night, and we have had a very, very productive day. First things first, we had our practical mastering class in the mastering studio, and that went really well. I was in the hot seat today, and like I thought, I mastered a Christmas song. This was not what I expected. It was basically like a piano and like a child singer doing jingle bells. I was kind of hoping for, you know, creme de la creme, full orchestra style thing, but no. It's actually quite challenging when it's only made up of a couple elements, especially when there's no low end. As a mastering engineer, you really gotta think way outside the box, get out of the EDM world and realize, you know, I am mastering this for a Christmas album. It's a very simple track. And when it's simple, you do not have a lot of wiggle room to make things stand out or to alter things. And so for this particular track, I had to lower the volume of the vocal and then I had to raise up the instrumental. But the challenge with that was a lot of it was in the same frequency range. So I had to get clever with this one, but my instructor said, that I did a pretty good job with it. After that, we jumped into a studio session, starting to get things organized for a lot of these projects that we got two weeks to do. And then we went and dropped in to be an observer for group A doing vocal recording for our advanced vocal production class. I actually hung out there for I think like an hour 45. And funny enough, the instructor asked me to jump into the hot seat for that too. It was only at the very end though, where the vocalist was recording some oohs and ahs, got a couple loops, in, but it was nice, honestly, to kind of get in the hot seat before it's our turn next week. Next week, as I was saying, I'm in the hot seat with two other students and we all get to help each other. And this goes towards our final mark. I got a little workaround from this. Brittany Egbert will finally be back from her trip. We are jumping into the studio this coming Monday to record for one of our tracks. I'm loving the fact that out of the four tracks I think that we've recorded, two of them are brand new 
meaning I get to submit them for my final project for advanced vocal production. I think we had a really productive day so far. This evening we've just been working on a couple of older projects that have kind of taken a back seat, including that Britney Spears Toxic Cover remix. And this is sounding really, really good. We added some outro vocals that are from the original track that we thought just grooved along and sounded really, really nice. So things are all coming together and I'm hoping that by the end of this course I'm gonna have a good handful six tracks maybe to start releasing also we got the next track for the what if EP coming out soon I'm super stoked to share this one with everyone all right that's the recap that's what I did for the day we'll talk to you soon good morning everyone it is Thursday June 2nd and we just finished a super important little zoom call with somebody from a certain sample pack company I don't know, should I say? Hmm, nah, I don't wanna jinx it. But anyways, kind of following Icon's suggestion, they have jobs and internships and all sorts of different opportunities that come across their desks regularly that they send to students. The trouble with that for me is 99% of those opportunities are LA based. So I got the idea that in my local area, there's a couple people who own a pretty big sample pack company and I've known them from the past. And so I reached out and got a a little almost kind of interview this morning see if I could at least intern and then hopefully if I do a good job this may turn into a full-time position that would be really cool I would love to have a paying job in the music industry we'll see what transpires from that I'll definitely let you know how that all unfolds and reveal who it is later on but yeah this morning we are jumping into our sound design homework that's due tomorrow technically we're gonna get it all done today and this was synthesized percussion as well as creating creative effects risers so once I'm done all that of course we'll jump onto the computer show you what we came up with and yeah today's gonna be a good day we always have lots of work to do we also need to start that bring me the horizon mix for our advanced mixing class and then of course we got to work on music we got to work on our finals for all our classes we got a bunch of stuff coming up mastering we have our practical exam in the mastering studio sound design we essentially have to synthesize an entire track do everything from scratch ourselves and put together a complete idea and hand that in vocal production we have a two track vocal EP that we need to record the vocalist with and then mixing we actually are going to take one of our peers tracks and mix that so yeah that's our overview for Thursday studio 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 I'm feeling pretty good and we're gonna get to work here we are in Ableton and we are going to go over our sound design homework from last week. What we had to do was synthesize our own drums as well as some riser effects. And so this is kind of my first time using Serum to completely synthesize a kick drum. Usually what I do is I'll layer a whole bunch of stuff together and then use some post effects processing and I can usually get something super unique and really nice from that. So this is a fully synthesized drum out of Serum, an 808, take a listen. Now we go over here and what we were supposed to do was combine real drums with our synthesized snare. So take a listen to that. Not too bad. Here is our riser effect. And here it is all together. That beat kind of seems off to me, but nonetheless, that is our fully synthesized drum loop. Let's check out our second loop now, kind of a more four on the floor, 128 BPM.
I think these are pretty good for my first time fully synthesizing drums in Serum. Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, June 3rd, and we just got into Icon. Here's a little surprise. It is my goal to start another music alias. I might even start two more. It all depends. I feel like I have a lot of different styles in me, and although I really believe that Elated can cover anywhere from techno to progressive house to uplifting trance, but that's as long as it fits the vibe. There are certain tracks that I have made that just don't feel like they fit the vibe, but I still really like the music and why hold on to it when I can put it out into the world. So yeah, new project coming in the future sometime. Look out for that. This morning we are just working on music before our advanced sound design class. That's about all we got planned going on. We got a few assignments on the go and for advanced mastering, we are mastering a nine track album. So we got our work cut out for us as we head in to the final couple weeks of this quarter. All right, I'm gonna drink my coffee and get to work. Well, good afternoon. It is shortly after my advanced sound design class and I wanted to give you a short recap as per usual. Today was a lot of fun. We went over glitch effects. And now one thing I will say is Icon is definitely not a bass music school. I think it has a bit of a reputation for being one because a lot of the most successful artists out of the school are bass music artists. But in my sound design class, it goes about 80-20 in favor of people doing melodic music versus bass music. Now, I personally love this sound design class, but it does feel like it is very much geared towards bass music. We've done respaces, we've done Nero bass. A lot of these glitchy techniques probably wouldn't use them on a trance track. Definitely could use them on a techno track though, so there's a lot of different applications for the tricks that we're using. The cool thing about understanding how to set up these processes is that you're always going to get something completely unique but the fact that you know how to set these processes up means you're setting out to do this intentionally so it's kind of like controlled chaos and almost similarly to how you would record a vocalist and do takes that's what you can do with these glitchy effects and then you can take the best parts out of it then you can either re-glitch that reprocess it do whatever you want to it and then even make a whole new sound out of that sound so it's kind of a never-ending rabbit hole but it's a unique unique way to view sound design. So yeah, we chill out for a bit. It's Friday, so we got Pizza Friday. Every single Friday at Icon, 6.45. It's always a good time. Then we just got studio time. We got tons and tons and tons of homework. Things are really adding up towards the end of the quarter here. Anyways, we're gonna get back at it. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday, June 4th. We are in the mastering studio this morning working on mastering an album for advanced mastering class. This is a lot of work and the end goal result is that there is a seamless listening experience across all tracks. And so that means getting the tones to match, that means getting the vocal volumes to be around the same, and then obviously the overall loudness needs to be similar. So anyways, what we're doing this morning is running our tracks through this analog hardware here and we just wanna capture the tone of this hardware. Hardware. Even though there's tons of emulators out there, you really cannot capture the true analog sound without running your tracks directly through it. So that's gonna be our main focus this morning. We got two hours in here, then lunch, then straight back into the studios. We got a lot of homework, a lot of projects due for the final week. All right, let's get to it. But if you go. 